and feel the gentle breeze then and sings my soul, soul my Savior God unto thee how great the word how great the word then sings my soul my Savior God to thee My name is John Steiner. I am here to speak this morning as David and Carol are on vacation. And our text today is going to be from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9 through 18. If you have your Bibles and want to turn to that, I'll give you a moment to find it or use the Pew Bible. An interesting lesson today about faithfulness to God. In this passage, Elijah was very zealous for God his entire life from the time that he was anointed to be a priest and prophet uh, forward. He was very zealous for God and had won a wonderful victory against the prophets of Baal when uh, there was a challenge issued that he would make an altar and put a sacrifice on it and the, God, and the prophets of Baal would do the same thing. And uh, we will see whose God is the real God because the real God would take up the sacrifice uh, and uh, that would settle the issue. So the prophets of Baal built their altar 
and Elijah built his altar, and the prophets of Baal, like 400 of them, were all dancing around and entreating their god, Baal, to come down and to take up the sacrifice from the altar. And uh, they were cutting themselves and dancing all around and doing all kinds of things to try to have uh, the prophet, the uh, god, Baal, take up the uh, sacrifice. And they exhausted themselves because it just didn't happen. Elijah, on the other hand, full of faith, prayed to God, and God, with one big bolt of fire, took up the offering, the stones the altar was built on, and the dust of the earth, the Bible says. A great victory. And the prophets of Baal were put to the sword. And uh, it was a big, great victory for, for God and for his prophet. Well, a short time after that, Elijah met up with Ahab and Jezebel, a wicked woman who had usurped her husband's authority and was responsible for murder and other heinous things. Uh, she said to Elijah, as she was, as she was a Baal worshiper, by this time tomorrow, you're going to be like one of the prophets that you killed. And after she said that, Elijah ran for the desert, the wilderness, and he found a cave, and he hid himself in the cave, and he was afraid. He slept in the cave, and in the morning, he heard a voice, and he knew that voice. It was the voice of God, and God asked him, Elijah, what are you doing here? Elijah said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left to worship you, and they seek to take my life. God says to Elijah, go stand by the entrance of the cave and behold, see what you, what, what you see. So God passed by and when he did, a great wind crushed the rocks out in front of him where there were some mountains and it was a powerful blow of wind that crushed the rocks. After that, there was an earthquake and uh, it really shook, but God was not an earthquake. Then fire, a raging, enormous fire, but God was not in, in the fire. And after that, a still, small voice, God was in that, and he got Elijah's attention, and he said to Elijah, I want you to go your way through the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Aziel, the king of, over Syria, also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Saphat, of Abel, you will anoint him to be prophet in your place. If anyone survives the sword of Hazel, Jehu will kill them. And if anyone survives Jehu, Elisha will kill them. Yet I have received 7,000 in Israel whose knee has not bent, bowed to Baal and mouth, their mouth has not kissed him. What happened to Israel? They were God's jewel, his, his bride. They forgot God. They turned away. And people started talking about a foreign God, this God Baal that was supposed to be all that mighty, great, he could do all kinds of things. And so the people were convinced when they saw this giant statue made by man that that was the great God and not the God of Israel. You would think after so many generations of hearing the oral tradition, you would think that they would have cemented in their minds that there is one God, Jehovah, and he only should we serve and show our affection. 
but voices and perhaps greed and perhaps avarice came into the situation and the Jews found themselves proclaiming a new God. And from that, out of that, came the loss of the nation to a new God. And people turned on God and they stopped doing what he said. And then they did horrible things, atrocities against the prophets of God because they had enough courage to tell them the God you're serving was made by man. It's not going to do anything for you. You need to return to God. And they would put them to the sword. And then their covenant, they broke the covenant they had with God. And after that, they turned and did all kinds of things to show God how much they hated him and how much they loved Baal. Can this ever happen to another nation? Can this ever happen to the nation that you love, that some God will rise up and people will pursue a foreign God and they will forget about Jesus Christ, they will forget about God, Jehovah, and they will follow and defend and propagate this new God and his teachings instead of what you've learned your entire life? Is it possible? It happened to Israel. Later, what happened to Judah? They'll fail because they will turn from God. One of the possibilities of turning from God is that God can get your attention. He got Elijah's attention by showing him three things that he was not in, but they were terrible. They were really powerful, terrible. And yet, in God's teaching of Elijah, he was patient, he was loving, and he gave him a very simple little voice that Elijah knew. And from that, knowing that God was in the voice, he decided to go forth and be renewed in his strength and his ardor, and that he would go out and do what the Lord told him to do. From that came a great victory and a revival. But unfortunately, people who don't have God in their hearts are only just for a moment swayed that they should return to God. And then, if they don't have God in their hearts, they will pursue folly. Folly leads to destruction, and destruction leads to judgment. But we're told nowadays that we should not believe in Jesus Christ. Don't use his name in public. We're told we should be careful that we should not use God. Uh, there's a new force around the corner which is saying, religion is only like a sedative for the people. It helps them through their harsh life. Can it be that we would suffer a harsh life like the children of Israel who forgot their God, turned their backs on him, killed his prophets? And so what can you learn from this lesson? Don't follow foreign gods. Don't have any other kind of God in your life that takes the place of the living God. Follow him, pursue him. Remember your, the covenant between God and his people. Proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ. Proclaim God Almighty to the, to the masses. Help them to understand and to be able to hold their way religiously and proclaim Christ as King and our Savior. So this is what happened to Israel. I pray that it will not happen to us in our country. Let's bow for prayer. Our Father, we pray you bless this sermon. Help us to understand it. Help us to understand the intent behind it. To follow God, not to forget him. To love God and to be his child. And yea, his proclaimer. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.